Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me on Zen Made. My name is Jamie Reeder, and I am a coach with Cleaning Business Fundamentals. And today I am going to tell you about one thing that can put thousands of dollars in your bank account for your business and also maximize your schedule and keep your cleaners busy. So stay tuned for my talk and you will walk away with something that will, is, is, will seem so easy. I'm going to give you the steps to do it. And once you implement it, you are going to make thousands of dollars. So stay with me. Hi, my name is Jamie Reeder, and I'm a certified cleaning business fundamentals coach. And you are in the right place. Running a business has many challenges. And we all know that saying, you can run your business or your business can run you. CBF is a proven program with processes and systems in place and gives you a roadmap to run a successful house cleaning business. I have been using the CBF program in my business, Dust and Mop House Cleaning, for over 11 years. And I quickly grew my business to over a million dollars in just four years. Do you want to build a successful house cleaning business that runs smoothly even in your absence, that attracts the right employees and the right customers and is profitable. All of that is possible. As your coach, I will help you navigate that challenging road and help you build the business of your dreams. I can't wait to connect. Let's talk soon. I want all of you to stick around to the end of my talk, not only because I want you to get all of the amazing information, but because I am going to give you a gift. The gift is a code to attend a virtual event hosted by Debbie Sardone. And if you've been in the house cleaning industry for like, I don't know, two seconds, you know who she is. And if you don't, look her up. She's everywhere. And it will be hosted by Debbie Sardone and Derek Christian. And this $500 event, you are going to be able to attend for one dollar. I mean, that will be the best dollar that you've ever spent, trust me. So stick around to the end. I'm going to give you a code and a website to go to to register for the event. It is a virtual event, so you don't have to be there in person. It's not a, you know, you don't have to buy a plane ticket to go anywhere. So come to this virtual event. It's going to be amazing. It's called Love or List My Cleaning Business. And you're going to discover if you want to fall back in love with your business and get some great systems and processes into place or come and figure out how much all of your blood, sweat and tears that you poured into your business is worth. So please, please stay till the end for the website and your special code to attend the event. And it is a virtual event. Okay, so let's just dive right into the information. And again, like I said, this is not earth shattering. It's not rocket science. It's something that I thought of over 10 years ago uh, to use in my business to help me when I was overstaffed, um, last minute cancellations, or just really trying to fill gaps in my schedule as I was growing. And I will say I've been in business for 12 years. I have, I'm on track to uh, do $1.5 million this year, and I still use this um, in my business to fill in last minute openings. So lost time is lost revenue, right? So we all already know that we cannot make that back. So you do not have to be a million dollar business to implement this process. I promise you it is so simple and I'm really going to give you three, three things. Describing what it is, how you're going to market, setting some expectations for customers and for your cleaners. So boom, boom, boom. Very simple, very easy to implement. I wanted to show you my numbers. I've been doing this for 10 years and I went into my QuickBooks and added up all of my sales revenue. In over 10 years, I've made $342,000 off of this special. So, you know, you can, you can leave $10,000, $20,000 on the table um, and, not even, and not even realize that you're doing that. So 
Three easy steps, hourly specials and how to market, setting your customers' expectations, and how to train your team. So we will go over those three, um, those three bullet points. So in my company at Dust and Mop, we call this the hourly cleaning special. And the rules of the special for my business is that there is a minimum of three hours of cleaning and a rate that should be at and above your existing rate. Now, keep in mind when I'm going through this foundation for the hourly cleaning special is a lot of this premise was is based on having systems and processes into place. And I've been a member of CBF, well before it was CBF, um, Debbie Sardone coached me uh, directly one-on-one. -on -one. Debbie's the one that we're gonna get, get to see for the love or list it, so stay tuned <laughs> uh, for that code at the end. But her systems and processes are amazing at Cleaning Business Fundamentals. And that's how I organized the hourly cleaning special was to be very systematic and something that I could replicate no matter the size of my business. So it's a minimum of three hours. You want to at or above your existing rate. So for example, in my company, if we are running a special, if we're, let's say my, if my company's at $45 an hour, the hourly special goes out at 50. And you may say, well, what's the special then? It's if it's five dollars more, well, the special is is that they don't have it to have a top to bottom cleaning for their first big cleaning, um, and they don't have to have for recurring service, right? They don't have to sign up for weekly, bi weekly, or monthly. This special is for people that are in your database, or maybe people that follow you on social media that aren't. Most of them are not going to sign up for recurring services. They're not going to do a big, huge top to bottom one time cleaning. Now, some may sign up for the hourly special and then like it so much that they want to go into recurring services, which is great. They get a little taste of it and then they decide that they want to go into recurring, which I know some of my clients have said that they've done this and that's exactly what has happened. And we have also seen that happen in my business, but I don't use it as a marketing program to get recurring customers because you don't want to cannibalize your existing base of prospects or leads. So you really want to nurture them um, through whatever your marketing sales funnel is. And unfortunately, we're not going to have time to talk about that today. That's a whole nother talk. But um, And we could spend days on sales and marketing funnels. I have a background in sales myself. But you want to make sure you touch the customer a certain number of times in X number of days before that lead kind of goes dead, right? Um, and and is into kind of like a prospecting funnel. So once you've quoted them and then you've touched them multiple times and they've gone through your sales funnel, then that's when you want to start this. So you don't want to give this to someone that just filled out a quote form yesterday, if you're getting ready to send out hourly specials, you want to leave them off of that because you want them to bite on the one time plus recurring. So we do have some very specific rules. Um, this is a one off cleaning and it can only be purchased when you as the owner or your office manager, whoever decide that you need to fill in open spaces on your schedule. We do follow uh, a solo cleaning as a standard at my business. And um, so three, four, or six hour blocks. So just know that when I say hours, I'm talking about total man hours. So if it's a six hour block and you're running in teams of two, obviously that's two cleaners for three hours. So just know that in my talk, this talk or any other talk, if I say uh, hours, that always means man hours. Um, it is not to be sold, again, as a part of your individual sales process or your initial sales process, I'm sorry, or any active working leader prospect. And it's not meant to be a substitute for a deep cleaning or any recurring service. So we don't want to cannibalize our existing base, as I've already said. In my company, we only take credit cards for this cleaning, um, and it is non-refundable. So for the customer, we tell them this, that, the, that it is non-refundable because typically when we have the special go out, we will have customers ask 
to be put on a waiting list because it fills up so fast because the, the specials just go. And so it's certainly not fair to us and our other customers that are waiting if someone just cancels at the last minute. So once they pay for it, it's once they schedule it, it's done. And if they cancel it at the last minute, we do charge their credit card. And um, they we are very clear with them on that. So make sure that you're doing that as well. So you may say, well, how does this hourly special work? So at, at my company, Dustin Mop, we always have a standard set of services that we do for the initial and the recurring cleaning. So for this cleaning, and which is why it is a special, but we do charge a little bit more is because we allow the customer to create a list and the cleaner starts at the top of the list and works their way down and gets done with as much of the list as they can in X amount of hours that the client has purchased, okay? So the cleaner does not have to finish the entire list and we tell the clients that. And I'll talk a little bit more about how you communicate with the clients to set reasonable expectations about the cleaning. So let's go to marketing. So how are we marketing this? So I've been in business for 12 years. We obviously have a database um, of quite a bit of potential customers, prospects, right, that have inquired about services over the years. However, I did say earlier, if you remember, that you do not have to be a million dollar business to use this. And I started it well before I was a million dollars. And what my suggestion is, is that even if you're small, and even if you're still just trying to grow that database, it's fine. If you have 10 people that you quoted and it went dead, send them an email and say, hey, we have openings on Tuesday, right? So, and we'll talk a little bit more about the marketing, but you will want some type of um, email script that, that explains what you're doing, you know, a nice visual with your logo, maybe an image if you use something like MailChimp, Infusionsoft, typically larger companies will use Infusionsoft and then that's all automated and you can set up broadcast emails or constant contact, right? But the point of the marketing is this. In the subject, I can tell you buzz words that work are things like don't spend your weekend cleaning, last minute cleaning special, last minute cleaning deal, um, Things like that work really well in the subject line. We do get more traction with the last minute cleaning special in the subject. So even just something simple as that last minute cleaning special. And scarcity. Scarcity is part of sales, of selling, and you definitely want to make this a scarcity. So if you have six openings on Tuesday, morning, you don't want to tell all your clients that you have six openings. You want to tell them you have two, okay? And then every time somebody calls you, oh, you just got the last appointment, <laughs> right? People, if, if you have to create that sense of urgency because if you don't, then people will sit around and wait till the last minute and then you're still scrambling. So use scarcity um, in your marketing, um, and just don't tell them all of what you have open. So you might say, I have two available appointments at this time and that time. And again, we do our openings based on a specific CBF formula and how we do things with our cleaners, but you certainly could do that however it, you know, it may fit into your business as far as timing goes. Alrighty. Setting expectations for our customers. So important to make sure that we're communicating with our customers and we are telling our customers exactly what they can expect with this cleaning. Now, no matter if you have already uh, quoted the customer and gone over your regular service with, services with them, let's say this is an old lead, the first time that they sign up, we do require that they call, that we talk to them on the phone in person to explain what the hourly cleaning is. Now, if they have had it before, we do not require that and they can actually book through an automated process that we have set up and we already have their credit card on file so we don't even have to talk to them, which 
I can't go into the automated process right now, but um, but what that helps us with is when we send these specials out, our our email and phones are going crazy and everybody wants that spot and it's hard to keep up with everything. So if we have them automated and we know we already have their credit card on file, they're a good customer, they've used it before, we'll book them um, very fast and it's less uh, resources that you have to use in your office to book uh, these cleanings. So that's helpful as well, especially if you're somebody that cleans out in the field and you know you have a client's credit card on file and they say, hey, I'd like this three-hour cleaning, I got it like three months ago, and you know they already know it, boom, you can just send them right back and say, okay, it's yours, you got it. So it is helpful for those of you that are still not mop-free and still working out in the field. Um, and by the way, if you're still um, working in the field, uh, definitely need to get up with CBF and ask about the 90 days mop free program. But <laughs> okay, so let's just talk about the expectations for the customers. So the cleaner's time always starts when you arrive, when the cleaner gets inside the home. Okay. Uh, so make sure the customer knows that to have their list in writing, it needs to be a prioritized list in writing and done prior to the cleaner's arrival. The best place to put it is on the kitchen counter if the client's not gonna be there. Do not allow the client to verbally tell you if you're still cleaning in the field or your employees a verbal list. You will never remember it and that customer will be unhappy. So just set these ground rules for the customer. Please write a list. And we make the customers write the list and leave that. We know that there is technology. We, yes, we can type it on their work order. Um, but that creates us to use more resources in our office to do that. But it's not a big deal for the customer to sit down. They can walk around their house and figure out what they want done in their home. We tell our customers that we highly recommend that if your home has excessive buildup, you purchase our top to bottom cleaning. That's our one-time initial cleaning. And we have found that our hourly cleanings do not allow enough time for excessive scrubbing, which may be required in some areas. So that's specifically what we say to the clients, word for word. We tell them we accept credit cards, um, only to secure the appointment and the payment for my company, we put that on hold 24 hours prior to their cleaning. And we also, again, reiterate after we get their payment that it is non-refundable. So even if a client has booked the service before and they say they want it again and they have our, we have their card on file, we still remind them, as a reminder, this is a non-refundable cleaning and they all know that but we always remind them of that and then there are some internal rules that we have so and, and some of this is around things like you know like workers comp and stuff like that but we're not going to be flipping over mattresses we are not going to be climbing on a eight foot ladder you know to change light bulbs in a chandelier <laughs> or things along those lines right and we only clean the interior of a home we're not clear cleaning anything exterior so it does have to fall within our normal um operating procedures there are a few things that we will do like if they want us to wash the dishes we don't offer that in our regular service but we will do that for them if they want it on the hourly service um, however we do not do laundry but again you can customize that what you will and will not do based on your insurance parameters or what you do as a company um, but it's going to be important that whatever you tell the customer Make sure you put it in writing and make sure you're also giving that to your cleaners so they know exactly what you told the customer because your cleaners have to be trained as well. So for the customers, you know, as a reminder, this is not a deep cleaning. It's not a deep scrubbing. And I will tell you from experience that this will get you in this will get you in a little bit of trouble with customers if you're not clear on this because your cleaners will go in there and they will deep scrub a shower that has a ton of mold and mildew buildup and they'll spend an hour and a half out of a three hour cleaning in the shower. So it's important that you're very consistent in your messaging both to the customer 
and to your cleaning staff. So just make sure that you keep that um, consistent. And again, this is something else that I learn, I learn in CBF is about systems and processes and, and having that consistency. So again, inside of, so I've gone over all of that about how to communicate that to your, to your customers. And also that there are no guarantees that the entire list will be completed. And we do train the customer a little bit on how to write the list. So we do want them to kind of do it by room. Um, but some customers, all, you know, they'll want the kitchen done and then all the floors downstairs and they'll put the floors at the top of the list. Well, we have to train our cleaners to have some common sense, right? So we'll talk about that as well. But and how we how we talk to our trainers when they're in the field to doing these as well. Okay, so let's move on to training your team. So the entire list does not have to be completed. And we can consider this more of like a, a maintenance style cleaning. I already talked about that. It's just a little spruce up. Um, this is not someone that's typically going to want regular recurring service. And we emphasize with our team, there is no deep scrubbing on these cleanings. Because if they need a deep scrubbing, they really just need to be purchasing an initial big one-time cleaning, whatever you call it, a top to bottom, a spring cleaning, a deep cleaning, whatever it is, that's what the customer should be buying. So this is a maintenance style cleaning. We tell them, our cleaners, if there is a lot of buildup, just do your best to move on. It is a light cleaning. And they do have to plan a little bit um, accordingly to finish in the time frame allotted for the job, right? So as I was saying, if a customer puts their hardwood floors because they all want their hardwood floors done at the top of the list, obviously we don't want to do the floors first and mop all over or walk all over them. So if a, say a customer has a kitchen, we kind of like to do it by room, but the cleaners all know, do the floors last, but just be aware of your time and know, you know, oh, I might need 30 minutes to do all the hardwoods downstairs. So I'm going to go down the list, but I'm going to set my timer to about 30 minutes before. Uh, the cleaner, when they get to the home, um, they take a picture of the prioritized list. And this is so important. Our, our team, our cleaners, send the, a picture of the list to the office. And the reason why we do that is because, and that's at the beginning of the cleaning, that's the first thing they do when they go into an hourly cleaning, they have to send the list over to the office. And the reason that we do that is because if the customer calls and complains or says that the cleaner didn't do something, we have the list. And if it's not on the list, then we know. And if the cleaner, if the list is not provided and the customer's not home, the cleaner has to check in with the, uh, the office, obviously. If we can't get a hold of the homeowner, we'll typically tell the cleaner to start in the bathroom, in the kitchen. And, um, but we usually hear back from the customer. But if we don't, we'll just go in there and, and you know, just give them the, the highest priority items. Our manager, of course, always contacts the customer for details. So the cleaner, of course, starts, as I said before, starts at the top of the list and works their way down, completing as many items as possible within the total amount of hours purchased. The cleaner will check off each item that's completed and send the final image to the office with a checkbox of what they did. So if there's things at the bottom of the list that they didn't do or get done, then we will know when we're talking to the customer. And then, of course, we always tell our cleaners, if you're not sure how to handle something, you know, call the office and we'll support you. So, as I said, this is not something that is rocket science. So, it's something that is very simple, but you can make a lot of money doing it. So, try it out. And I will tell you that there will be a lot of people on here listening that will say that's a great idea and they never implement anything. 
Um, but for those of you that do, you will make a lot of money uh, doing this. And stick around because I am going to give you my contact information if you feel like you need some help or coaching. And I'm also going to give you that code for that special virtual event hosted by Debbie Sardone. So stay with me. Thank you guys so much for sticking around. I really appreciate it. If anyone has any questions or is interested in learning more about CBF, Cleaning Business Fundamentals and Systems and Processes to put into place for your business, I'm going to put my email address on the slide. And also, I'm going to give you the web address with that special code for the $1 to go to a virtual event with Debbie Sardone and Derek Christian. It's going to be amazing. So here you go. Here it is. Um, my email is Coach Jamie, and it's spelled J-A-M-I-E at DebbieSardone.com. And please go to DebbieSardoneTraining.com to register for the Should I Love It or List It and use code Jamie. Thank you again so much, everyone. I really appreciate your time and good luck with your cleaning business. I wish all of you the best, and I hope to hear from some of you soon.